Yo guys, how's it going? This is the 5 things you probably didn't know about NHL 16. For your entertainment, I'm going to leave out any glitches or hidden controls, otherwise this video would probably be 20 minutes long. And by the way guys, I just wanted to thank you all so much for subscribing. I just hit 100 subscribers, that means a ton to me. And I'm coming out with a challenge video, either like a milk jug or a cinnamon challenge, something like that. Uh, where you see my face and I just do a challenge. Hopefully it'll be funny. Uh, if that's not your speed, don't worry. I still have more NHL content coming out in the future. But anyways, boys, I really hope you enjoy the video. Let's jump into it. Ryan Sewell. Now, if you thought this guy looked a little young to be an actual player in this game, then you'd be wrong. Ryan's an actual player that you can pick up in GM mode. He isn't 18 years old. He's actually 13 and isn't some wonder kid hockey prodigy. What happened is Ryan's dad went to a Make-A-Wish Foundation fundraiser where EA was auctioning the ability to be a player in NHL 16. Long story short, Ryan's dad bought this for him, although it really hasn't been disclosed how much Ryan's dad paid for it. Knowing EA, it definitely wasn't cheap. I wish my dad would buy me a player slot in NHL 17, but it would probably go something like this. Dad, buy me a player slot in NHL 17! Yeah, yeah, yeah. You going to jail? NHL 16 cover change. Of these five things, I feel like this might be the one that most people know about, simply because the amount of media coverage that it got. Well, let's rewind a little bit. It's the end of the 2014-2015 NHL season, the Hawks just won the cup, and EA is finalizing its cover art. You see here, it originally had Patrick Kane and Jonathan Taze on the cover. Unlike NHL 14 or 13, there was no vote for NHL 16's cover. Instead, EA chose Patty Kane and Johnny Taves to be on the cover for pretty obvious reasons. And then Patty Kane was allegedly accused of committing sexual assault or rape, causing a huge police investigation. This has been an incredibly difficult time for many people. I cannot apologize enough for the distraction this has caused my family, my teammates. I am confident that once all of the facts are brought to light, I will be absolved of having done nothing wrong. In the end, Kaner was not charged with any crime, and as a result of this scandal, EA decided to remove him from the cover and just leave Jonathan Taves on there by himself. Desperate race to get him. Huge stop. He knocked it in himself. It's in the net. Huge stop. Counts. What the fuck? <laughs> Shitty fucking bullshit horse scrotum licking AI. You cannot honestly say that you've played NHL unless you have a story about how bullshit the AI is. But EA actually lowered the intelligence or skill of the AI from NHL 15 to 16. Not only that, but they continued to do so through updates. All of these updates are public information on EA's website, so go check them out if you want to see how you're getting boned. I'm not gonna lie, in the past, whenever the AI would fuck up, I'd always blame it on myself and I would say, you know, oh, I should have been in a passing lane or something. Or the same thing when I see people comment about how shitty the AI is on my videos, I just think, wow, these guys aren't very good. But now that I've learned that, you know, it's, it, the system is rigged, I kind of feel bad for us. Jack Flynn. Jack Flynn just might be the hot goalie that you've been looking for. At 6'8", he's the tallest goalie in the entire game. Ever wonder why Ben Bishop seems to stop everything that comes his way? If you've played HUD for a while, you know that overall isn't everything when it comes to a goalie. And regardless, he's still not going to be the best goalie in the game, but the fact that he is the tallest goalie in the game gives you a clear advantage when it comes to positioning and stopping pucks that are in that upper part of the net. So if you guys are looking for a really cheap goalie, I believe he's selling for about 150 pucks. I suggest you try him out. Connor McDavid's rookie base card. Without a doubt, Connor McDavid is the most desirable player in NHL 16. There are a number of cards out there that reflect Connor McDavid with a higher overall value than his original base card. But for this video, I'm just going to stick to the base card. Connor McDavid's rookie base card has a higher overall than both Sidney Crosby and Alex Ovechkin had as overalls in NHL 2006, which was their rookie season. 
that's just insane to think about because Alex Ovechkin and Sidney Crosby revolutionized the way this league went and they are no doubt Hall of Famers. So could Connor McJesus be the second coming? Before I get ahead of myself and convince all you guys that he is the second coming, let me explain how Sid and Ovi got the ratings in NHL 06. So back in 05, there were actually three companies making NHL video games. We had EA, then there was 2K, and then there was Gretzky NHL. So EA, in an attempt to beat the other two games in sales, actually launched their title a little early. And by doing so, they did not update the Pens or Caps lineups with Sid or Ovi in them. Instead, Sid and Ovi were a part of the farm teams, and their overall skill reflected that. So maybe it was too forward to say McDavid is McJesus, but who honestly knows? So guys, that concludes my video. If you learned something here today, please drop a like. Or maybe you know something that I did not cover. Put it in the comment section below so we all can read it. And anyway, guys, I am out for the time being. I'll see you later. Yeah.